Lucia, what is your first memory of science? So, I've always really loved and been interested in animals. Just generally, I think like basically all animals are amazing. And I thought that even when I was a little kid, and I thought it was cool how there were so many different types of animals and they came in all these different shapes and sizes and they were so different to each other. And I asked my parents, like, why do we have all these different types of animals? Why aren't we all basically the same? And my dad told me in very simple words about how we'd evolved to suit the different places that we all lived in. And so the reasons that giraffes were so different to people is because they ate different food and they needed to have these different bodies to survive. And I realized that things are always changing and growing and that the world is very diverse and interesting. And that really uh, piqued my curiosity in a big way. Okay, all right. And you're a mathematician now, how did that happen? <sighs> That's kind of hard to say. Um, Sometimes it feels like it happened by accident. So I got interested in astronomy when I was maybe 17. And so I, um, I took A-level physics. And to do physics, you have to take maths as well. And then I did my undergraduate degree in theoretical physics. And while I was studying that, we had to take some maths courses. And the more I studied, the more I felt like I wanted to go more general and more abstract. And so the maths courses in my undergraduate appealed to me more and more. And after I finished my bachelor's, I decided, okay, I'm just gonna study maths for a while now. And so I did a master's in mathematics. And then I actually quit for a while. Um, and I did a completely different job. And while I was doing that job, I started tutoring uh, bachelor's students. And something just happened, like, I just missed maths so much. And when I was explaining it to them, I felt this passion that I didn't think I was ever going to feel again. So I decided to go back and start a PhD. In maths? Yeah, in maths. <laughs> okay, that's wonderful. <laughs> what advice would you give your 12-year-old self? It's okay that you don't know what you want to do. You can do all this different stuff, you can try everything and you can, you can play that trumpet for a while and you can practice your French and if you love them you can keep following them but you don't have to. Um, school is going to tell you that you'll choose your GCSEs and you'll choose your A-levels and that these are the biggest decisions of your life but they're not. You can change your mind anytime you want. Okay. <laughs> And what advice would you give your 42 year old self? <sighs> Assuming she's similar to my 28 year old self, I would say school was difficult, but you survived it. And sometimes being 20 and being 25 was difficult, but you survived it. And the choices you made always worked out in the end. So whatever drama you're going through at 42, follow your gut and it'll all work out. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's great. Subscribe to the Science Talk and get your dose of science today. Great. <laughs> Thank you, Lucia. <laughs>